ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another session insha'Allah of making the best of Ramadan at Al-Quran and Al-Hadith Center in Toronto بإذن الله تعالى This is a, going to be my last halaqa insha'Allah for the month as we were continuing the Ramadan halaqas here um, every day and mine was specifically on Monday at 7.30 um, and inshallah we're going to end ta'ala, with some inshallah very important reminders about this month inshallah specifically the night that we all wish to reach which is Laylatul Qadr يقول الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى ما طلع الفجر الله سبحانه وتعالى told us in the surah the specific point inshallah or some points i'm going to speak about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr verily we have sent it down in the night of the decree of decree this night as the scholars have mentioned specifically as our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was mentioned um is a night that is better, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran as well, than 1,000 months. Now, we look for it, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu mentioned to us, تَحَرَّوا لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ فِي الْوَتْرِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْحَدِيثِ The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sallam mentioned that we look for Laylatul Qadr on the odd nights. Right, so we have the 21st, the 23rd, the 25th, 27th, and the 29th. That's when we look for then Laylatul Qadr, the night of decree. Um, we may ask, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal on that night? The Quran. The Quran, which was revealed on that night. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people, as we all know, in the month of Ramadan. And on every evening, or on every, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, every day of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free slaves free slaves that were destined to go to hellfire and makes them enter Jannah 
Allah I did not want to make a mistake, but I'm not sure if it, this happens at night time or the day time. But people are freed. We have to understand that, inshallah, that people are freed in the month of Ramadan. Like I mentioned before, being Allah Ta'ala, we as Muslims have to appreciate being Allah Ta'ala and the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I have, must have spoken about this before. Or I'll say it right now, inshallah, if I did not mention it before, I'll say it now, be Allah Ta'ala. I did not mention that before, but I'll say it now. The forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is plentiful. Is plentiful. So the exact nas of the hadith whether it's at day, whether is it, it is at night, what I want you to understand being in Allah Ta'ala is Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala free slaves, inshallah. Now, the qadr of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, the decree of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, we all know that everything is decreed. So do not say, you know what, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala decreed to free people, maybe I'm not from them, so I'm not gonna work hard. No, you're supposed to try. Allah's knowledge is amazing, but you try. Now, when we as Muslims appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, then it's upon us to strive and work hard. It's not too late. We still have more days of Ramadan left. We still have more nights of Ramadan left. We still have this minute. It's never too late to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. And as we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is al-ghafoor al-rahim, right? The most forgiving, the most merciful. So as Muslims be in Allah ta'ala, we do not give up. We do not give up and say, you know what? Enough, I cannot be forgiven because my sins are so much. No, we say work hard. Work very hard on a daily basis. Make dua on a regular basis. Make istighfar on a regular basis. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you on a regular basis. Because we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every second that we breathe, every millisecond that we breathe, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most forgiving. Why don't we run? and seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are in need of him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ghani he is, not, is in no need of us whatsoever he is in no need for our worship for our bowing down, for our dua he is the most rich al ghani we are al fuqara we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore strive with Allah ta'ala to work hard and do not say, now is not time for me to ask Allah for forgiveness because I have committed so many sins. You have a chance to bow down and ask Allah, make dua. As we all know, the dua of the one who is fasting is accepted. So make dua. Make dua. Inshallah, it is the time to make dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ta'ala, he is the one who forgives. As we all know, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he used to teach his companions, he used to teach by example. And he used to be budwa hasana, as is mentioned in the Quran. He was a good role model for us. And he was a good role model for the companions and all of mankind. So we as Muslims, bin Allah ta'ala, by reading his seerah, his biography, and what he went through. And we all know the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests the most are the prophets. The prophets were tested the most. And if we think that we have seen many things in our life, we need to think again and think about what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa went through for us to be able to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. The struggles that he had to go through, the difficult times that he had to go through, 
the battles that he had to fight for Islam to be the upper hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the situation that his companions were in, specifically after he died, and how Islam was spread. And you look at it, the situation that we are in now, and how the Muslims are so weak. This is due to our sins. Our sins and the farther that we are from the Quran and the Sunnah, the farther that we are going to be from being a successful you know, um, uh, people. Therefore, we must be in the light ta'ala. Number one, stay away from all types of sins. We have to understand this. And I'm going to hammer this in your heads, inshallah. Because in the end of the day, it is sins that destroy a nation. It is sins that destroy a nation. Therefore, me, myself, I have to work hard in the night ta'ala to stay away from everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me to stay away from. And then I teach my family members. Taban with hikmah, with wisdom. And then we have the community who will see your family as an example. And this community spreads and you affect more moms and you affect more fathers and your children affect more children. Therefore, you have a community that is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a community that is prepared for being a successful community. So we have an obligation to be in the light ta'ala to spread this da'wah and benefit from this, inshallah. Now, the person who is given da'wah has to, inshallah, be an example, first of all. And the four points that I'm going to speak about, and I spoke about this previously, right, is that you have to, inshallah, understand that you must seek knowledge, you must spread this da'wah, you must be patient upon what you encounter when you give the da'wah and the fourth one be ta'ala the first spreading the knowledge implementing i apologize da'wah and the fourth is being patient upon anything that you encounter during this during the da'wah that you were given very 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 important that we understand this be ta'ala so when you are knowledgeable of your religion and you are setting an example by implementing what you do, therefore being able to spread and make the call to the da'wah of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, then you are patient upon anything that you encounter in this da'wah. This is, in totality, a summary of the light ta'ala. Therefore, being the light ta'ala, we have to work very, very hard in everything that we do when it comes to being closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have an example now, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan. In this month of Ramadan, many of us may not know the situation of our neighbors. Many of us may not know the situation of how our neighbors are doing nowadays. We do not know that right now. But what we do understand is that we have an obligation upon our neighbor and upon what Allah subhanahu wa and upon understanding that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us the, the importance of the neighbor and how we have to understand their situation or what they need. A couple of days ago, one of the brothers mentioned that, you know, they want to deliver food. Um, alhamdulillah, and you have a number of brothers who are doing this now, mashallah. They're going and they are distributing food to the people who need the food. And he went to one of the um, houses and he was telling another brother and I was listening, if you were to see the situation of that house, basically you'll be shocked. How are our neighbors doing during this pandemic? How are they? Do we ask? Do we understand their situation? Do we just judge them and say, you know what? We're in Canada and everybody's doing good. Nobody needs nothing in Canada. You have social assistance, you have this, you have that. You have food banks. 
even though you have all these, um, you know, um, means of assistance, there are still people who need. There are still people who are in need. Therefore, the Muslim has to know the situation of his neighbor. Whether they be Muslim or non-Muslim, know their situation. How are they doing? Do they have suhoor? Do they have iftar? Or are you filling your belly with samosas and meat and rice and dessert and all types of delicious food and they are struggling? How is the neighbor? How are they? Ask yourself, be the light. So on these nights, inshallah, what Ramadan and the month of Ramadan is a madrasa, is a school. So we don't come into Ramadan or we don't leave Ramadan the same way we came in. We always have to improve. Even if you're a good Muslim, be a better Muslim. Aim high. Whether it comes to your mannerism, how you deal with people, whether it comes to how you used to work, if you're honest when it comes to work, yes, are you checking in late? But really, you're, are you checking in early and you came in late? And you're checking out, you know, early, but, you know, you're checking out like you checked out on time. How are you doing when it comes to, you know, basically signing on and uh, checking in work? Are you honest when it comes to transactions? When it comes to dealing with people, how are you doing? How are you doing? Because this is going to affect your risk and your income in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are you doing when it comes to, you know, um, dealing with your parents? Are you communicating with your parents? Have you even spoke to your parents or your siblings or your friends during these days and said, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Are you checking up on them? Are you keeping ties with your family members? Or are you still keeping that those ties cut off because of minor disputes? This is the 25th. 25th day of Ramadan, right? How are you doing? What are you doing? How are you dealing with your family members or have you cut them off? Basic small things that you could do to get ajr without in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not see them as very small though. In the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're very important, very big. So it is very important, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, that we leave Ramadan in a better state that we came in Ramadan. That's, to sum it up, that's very, very important. You leave Ramadan in a better way than you came into Ramadan. Improve yourself. Improve yourself as a Muslim. Did you read more Quran? Did you read the hadith of Prophet Muhammad and implement? Did you read the Quran and implement what you read? Did you learn some new du'as, right? Did you learn the du'a that you say before you, you know, after you break your fast? Did you learn? Um, did you pray with your family members at home? You know, salatul qiyam, jama'ah at home with your family. Did you do that? What did you do? How did you improve yourself? Very, very important. So um, to sum it up, we have this month of Ramadan, that is a blessing. People were blessed to fast in this month. And some people, they weren't able to fast this month because their time was up. Or maybe half of the month they fasted and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took their souls and so forth. But we have today, inshallah, we have the second. We have this intention to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. How are you improving yourself in this month of Ramadan? Um, this is very important. Some of you might say, no, it's too late. It's never too late. Well, if you're breathing and the angel of death didn't come to take your soul, you have a chance. Do not wait till it's too late. Please benefit from this month. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you in this month of Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said for those who have a problem with their moral character. Yaqul Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بعثت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق I was sent to perfect good manners good moral character very very important that we improve this Allah if we see that we improve our character and the way we carry ourselves and the way we walk and talk and you know carry ourselves we'll see a big change in our lives those around us will change and you will change obviously 
to the better, and you'll see a big improvement, subhanAllah. And this is one of the issues that we have to improve, how we are holding ourselves accountable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, when it comes to this. Because we all know how close the person is going to be, those who have good manners to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So make sure, bi ta'ala, that we improve uh, our akhlaq for those of us who you know have the short temper, you know, you have to improve that, inshallah. For those of us who, you know, um, do not like to smile and play with our children, smile and play, play with your children. For those of us who you know, do not help at home, you know, when it comes to the iftar uh, and, you know, uh, doing things around the house, help. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, what was, uh, you know, used to, you know, help in the house, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, Jazakum Allah khair, Barakallahu Fikum. I know this halaqa was a uh, very short one, insha'Allah. But in the ta'ala, I'm going to try to implement what I preach, insha'Allah, and I'm going to be on the way to the kitchen, insha'Allah. Um, Barakallahu Fikum. Wa sallallahu sallam ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa sallam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.